has been building experimental aircraft since the 70s. And, uh, of course, it's one of the ultimate uh, thing that every pilot wants to design and build is, is their own jet. And, um, and John actually started this, uh, as he called it the peanut project. Uh, in the late fall in Wisconsin, uh, peanut oil is available everywhere because they grow a lot of peanuts there. And uh, he, he sort of had this crazy idea that you might be able to uh, fly a jet on, on peanut oil. So this started as a little thing called the peanut project. Um, and as it developed, uh, they actually built the first uh, prototype and it was using an engine uh, uh, from England and uh, that engine, uh, for various reasons, didn't pan out. Uh, but the airplane was sitting at uh, Oshkosh, and, um, and I saw it there. I went over and talked to him about it. And uh, it, over the course of the conversation, I said, hey, watch me fly the, the, uh, the Salto in the air show today, and if you like what you see, let's talk about engines. And uh, so, so that's how the uh, PBS engine uh, got involved, and that's how I got involved in the project. But uh, it, it definitely proved the concept that uh, the jet engine worked. We were getting sufficient speed that uh, despite the higher fuel burn, we, we could get this decent range out of it. And uh, so that uh, evolved into uh, what we see here today, which is now a you know, production kit. And this is the first, uh, the first one built from essentially the kit by the factory. And uh, uh, it's been flying now for almost a year and um, just having a great time with it. It's a great flying airplane. The Subsonics uh, is, is available as a kit. They've shipped, I believe, eight of them uh, uh, as, of, as of now. And it's a very uh, complete kit. It, it comes with all the skins pre-drilled, pre-cut, um, a lot of the parts pre-cut, uh, machined canopy uh, uh, bows, um, a lot of the wiring complete, uh, and of course the engine installation, unlike most airplanes that have uh, cowlings and baffles and, and propellers and push-pull cables and, you know, all of these things to install the engine. In this case, the engine installs basically two bolts, uh, fuel and, and electrical, and, and it's good to go. So it should be a very, very simple kit, an easy kit to build and shouldn't uh, require a lot of time. The PBS engine, uh, PBS has build, been building rotating machinery for over a hundred years. Uh, the company has been around a long time and they built uh, APUs for the, uh, the Russian military. Uh, PBS being in the Czech Republic was part of the Soviet, uh, uh, Soviet Union. Um, when the wall came down, uh, you know, the Czechs uh, definitely are, are very um, outgoing and uh, uh, you know, very good craftsmen and, and it was a, a pretty natural thing for them to start looking for other places, other ways to, to make, a, make a go of this uh, this technology without the uh, uh, Soviet military in the background. So they took one of the uh, APUs that they had been building for the for Russian aircraft and used the rotating component uh, of that basically to, to build this engine. Because this is a turbine-powered aircraft, there are some, some rules, I think somewhat antiquated, having to do with flying a turbine-powered airplane. And so, a turbine-powered airplane, if it was a certificated airplane, would require a type rating. Since there's no type on an experimental, there's another process uh, typically called an LOA, letter of authorization, that allows you to fly a turbine aircraft that isn't certificated. And, and there's a process to go through uh, to get that that involves uh, actually a check ride uh, with an FAA examiner. And, and that's where we've been using the bonus jet as a training tool to get people uh, used to the engine and the system, and then they get a temporary LOA that allows them to go up and practice in this, uh, in this airplane uh, a few flights, and then the, uh, the examiner comes out and does a check ride. Interesting check ride because it's single seat. The examiner is on the ground, and he uses uh, ground observation and will also put a camera in the airplane, and he can review the flight afterwards. So uh, Paul Dye from Kit Planes Magazine uh, has come out and gone through our, our jet glider training program. Uh, very typical pilot of someone who might be flying this. He's got a lot of time, uh, uh, I think he owns three RVs, an RV three or four or six, I think. Uh, and, uh, and that's the sort of experience that, that will help the most with this. Uh, so all we really had to do was, was work him through some of the engine transition and just getting used to the power levels and things of the engine. So uh, 
He, uh, he came out, he really enjoyed flying the glider. He has a glider license, uh, but he doesn't have a lot of glider time. And um, so anyway, he came out, went through the bonus jet program, uh, learned how to operate the engine, and uh, I, I think he'll, he'll have a great time in this airplane. Kit Plane is very excited because we're the first uh, non-factory people to be allowed to fly the subsonics. This is the only jet kit available today to the home builders market. And uh, as such, it's kind of the tip of the spear for our, uh, our uh, core audience. So we think a lot of people are going to be very interested in, uh, in how the jet flies. You know, the, realistically building this from a standpoint of being a builder, it's a very simple kit to build. I really think just about anybody who can build an airplane can probably put this one together. Um, there is cost associated with it. I mean, it's a $55,000 engine, but there are people building. Uh, they quote the kit here at 130 k complete, ready to fly. And uh, that's not unusual for people building recreational airplanes these days. Um, it's not something you're going to just hop in and go fly all the time. In that regard, it's probably a little more of a sport activity than it is a transportation one. But I think there'll be a lot, uh, there'll be a lot of people interested in it. I've heard a lot of buzz about it. I think I put in, uh, they, they quote about six hours for the bonus jet uh, flying time, and we did it a lot shorter. Um, and I was very, very comfortable ready, getting ready to, to go fly this. Subsonics is real fun. Um, it is a, uh, it's an amazing little machine. If you're used to normal piston engine speeds, it takes off a little slower in the sense that it takes more runway. You've got to get more speed before you take off. Um, it's not, uh, it, it doesn't climb phenomenally at low speed, but once you get some smash to it, it really goes up. Uh, the, real, the real amazing thing about it is getting up to a couple thousand feet out over the desert here where it was cool and it was smooth and you throttle back and it's just like glass. It's just smooth as, as, smooth as glass, uh, no bumps and, and uh, you've got no prop going around out there, you've got no prop wash, you've got none of that kind of thing and you're just tooling around. It's just uh, uh, almost a dreamlike experience. Landing, uh, you want a little bit higher approach speed than you will in the average sport plane. You come over the fence at about 95. Um, I came a little faster than that simply because uh, it was a new airplane to me and I had 6,000 feet of runway to use. Um, it does take a little time to slow down. When I go back up with it, I'll probably shave 10 miles an hour off the approach speed and I won't get the float. The surprising thing is probably, uh, we, I was very well briefed. I was really well thought. I can't say that I had anything real surprise, except that uh, they're still working on the brakes a little bit, and it takes a little bit more time to stop. I think that they're, they're, they've already got the plans for to fix that in the next thing. So it took a little while to get it slowed down. But fundamentally, it flew like a good airplane. Yeah, I think in a, a pilot with average skills and a sufficient number of hours and that, that is religious about checklist use, you need to be used to checklists, you need to be used to a complex airplane because you've got landing gear, you've got to retract and, and extend on this. Uh, but I didn't see anything that requires a Superman to fly this airplane. You can find a full evaluation of the Subsonics jet in Kit Plane's 2015 August issue and at kitplanes.com. Meanwhile, I'm going flying.